In this video, I'll show you how to use the mesh detail and decal generators. With these, you can reach the visual quality of a scan mesh, but with all the benefits of a procedural trunk. So here we have the end result. I just cut the top of the tree so we don't have the, all the extra stuff we don't need. So if I go ahead and hide all of those mesh detail and decals, I had it quite a lot in there. <laughs> You'll see that it's just a procedural trunk. The first thing we'll add is moss. I already imported all the materials and meshes we're going to need for this. So for the moss, we'll use an atlas that I made. And if we look at the texture, it's super hard to see. <laughs> it's going to be better when we make the cutout. So we're going to click on add and then edit to create a cutout for this. So here you see we have a bunch of different moss, dirt and lichen. So the first one we're going to do is a round blob of moss. So all we need to do to create a cutout is move the points to circle all the texture we need, then move the pivot point back into the center. And I'll use the tessellation amount to add some segments in there, then I can assign it. So now to add the decal, it's under decoration decal. So here we have a decal, but default it's a white cube. I can assign the proper material and the cutout. And I'll change the generation style to interval. It's going to be better for moss and make them a bit bigger. Here we go. Then add some frequency and add count and add spiral a bit so it doesn't look like a grid. And I'll add other cutouts that I made earlier. So for this one, we'll use a, a green circle, one that is brownish, and a third one that is kind of vertical, so it mimics the pattern that we can see on a trunk. So if you have an atlas and you would like to use all the parts in the atlas to be in the same node generator, but you would like them to have different sizes, uh, you can use the scale value in the mesh window. This is super useful because that way you can really make sure you keep that pixel ratio right. So for this one, I need the vertical piece to be bigger than the other ones. So I change those. Then I'll increase it more so we can really see, we, we can really cover the trunk with moss and knock out a few because if we have blank spaces, it's going to look more natural. But right now, that moss is looking a bit flat, so I'll add some fluff on top. The first thing we need to do to, to achieve that is to add anchor points on our decal. Then we'll be able to add leaves on that decal. So to add anchor points, just use the anchor tool and then click, 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 click. Just add those <laughs> on your texture. And then we can assign it again. And now we'll create the actual fluff. So I'll add a new cutout in the material, add and edit. And for this, I'll simply use a little small portion of the texture we already used. So I'm creating a tiny, tiny triangle moving the pivot point, making sure I get all of that little circle, and then we can assign it. And I already placed anchor points on the other cutouts we're using for this, so we can already add the leaves. And now you see everywhere we added an anchor point, now there's a leaf. Now we need to change the orientation to make sure that the leaves are sticking out of the decal. So I'm in increasing the fold value. And then I want to get rid of those shadows on the planes. So I'll set the lighting style to surface X. 
and increase the puffiness amount to one. That way we don't have shadows because the normals are sticking out of the decal. Then I'll assign the material and the proper cutout. So here you see we have fluff. Now it's a bit big, <laughs> so I'll make them smaller. That's better. The next thing we're going to add to this trunk is a large scar on the trunk. So to do so, we'll use the mesh detail. And to add that generator, right click, add geometry, photogrammetry, and mesh detail. Right now it's super big because it's on the dream node, but I can simply drag and drop it on the trunk. I'll change the generation style to interval, and now we can see the white square that are there by default. So I'll assign the proper material. And here we go. Right now, I bet it's super small. Yeah, <laughs> you see, it's just super tiny. So I'll increase the size, and now we can see the big scar. I would like to mention something about that mesh I imported. So just make sure that the leaf is sticking out of, of the mesh you want to put on the trunk. So it should be on the opposite side of where it will lay on the trunk. That way you won't have any problem with positioning. So the way it attached to the trunk, um, we have three different style. For this one, we'll simply use a wrap. And I'll come back later to explain the other, the other style. We can see right away that the, the detail doesn't fit properly on the bark underneath. That's because I have a bit of a twist in my texture. So we can rotate the details and it will still wrap around the trunk. So if I increase the the twist on the bark, you can really see that whoop, it's going sideways. So no worries, you can go into the placement properties of your mesh detail and simply change the rotation. Right now we see that there's a seam that is visible, so we can get rid of that by increasing the offset value of the mesh. Decreasing, I mean, because we want it to sink into the trunk, so that way we don't see those little borders of the mesh. Now we're ready to add some nuts on top of that trunk. I'm taking some time to rename the nodes generators because it can get uh, nasty pretty fast. So you should keep it clean. Then just adding another mesh detail, changing the generation style to interval, and there we have the white cubes. Now I can hide the moss so we'll see better what's happening. And I'll assign the proper materials for this one, not two. So there we see they are on the trunk. So I told you earlier that we have two ways to attach the mesh to the trunk. Right now we have the sink until all edges are hidden. That's exactly what it does. And with this option, you can add vertex blending well, it's, it's vertex alpha that will look like the two textures from your mesh and the trunk underneath are blending. But right now, nothing is happening. And <laughs> that's because I selected the wrong generator. Uh, that happens to me more often than I like to admit. So <laughs> now that I have the proper generator, you can see that there are some vertex alpha happening. So it looks like the two textures are blending, which is fantastic. But if we go too far, there you see there's a little transparency gap happening. We have a solution for that. So you can add a, a strip inside of the mesh detail so it will get rid of that gap. Then I'll just adjust a bit the distance of the vertex alpha and we're good. It looks like it's blending. But what if you wanted the butter and the money of the butter? So, I mean, having your mesh detail wrapped around the trunk, but you still want to have that sweet vertex alpha happening on the edge. Well, you can kind of mimic that with the opacity map. So here we have my nut material. 
I don't have an opacity map for that. So we'll try something here. I'll just create a radial gradient and invert that because I, I do want the middle <laughs> to be showing. So I, if I increase the contrast and play with the brightness a bit, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So you see the borders of the knot are disappearing. This is not working because my nut is not a circle and is not in the middle of the texture. But still, it could be very easy to just create an opacity map and add a little gradient border on the, on the, on the edge. We added moss, we added scars. Now I want to do something more complex. So I'll still add a mesh decal and then change the generation style and assign the proper material. And what I want to do here is, you know when you have those big bumps on trees, usually there's little branches sticking out of it. So we'll try to reproduce that here. So here we have the bumps. I'll just adjust the size and change the rotation because I've, I have a bit of, a sh of shadows in my scans to be honest so I want to make sure that they're aligned. So how do we do we get the branches to stick out of those bumps? Here you see that I place some anchors before importing my mesh. So to show you that we need to go into another scene. Here you see it's just simply the same bump but placed in the middle of the scene. And what we want to do is add a target on top of this. So we can go in photogrammetry and target. So here we have a little point. I'll change the visual helper to be laser because I think it's easier to understand what's happening. So if I go, just go all the way down, I can choose laser. So here you see we have this red line and this indicates where the anchor is going to be positioned on the mesh underneath. Once you have the target placed, you can add a leaf on top so with nothing assigned to it, just a simple leaf and leave it with the by default uh, white square and I need to change the orientation, just putting a line value to one and that's it. So I already placed all the target on this. I'll just show you quickly what I did. So here we have four anchor anchors. Well, four targets that are on this mesh. Then all we need to do is export that mesh in an XML format. And then export that and import it into the other scene like I already did here. So now I can add the branches. I'll add some tube and change all the relative values to zero and use the absolute values for the spine length and the radius because I think it's easier to manage when dealing with those kind of meshes. And here we have branches. So next I'll just make it look more natural, less tube. <laughs> So assigning the material and then playing with it a little bit. And I want to add some leaves, but those won't be leaves. I'm adding other branches that were baked previously and just aligning them with the branches. So now I'm just going wild and adding everything I can because there's never too much icing on the cake. <laughs> so I'm just adding decals on there. Those are great to break the repetitive pattern of a trunk. In this case, I added some lichen and dirt. Now I'm adding ferns on top of the trunk. So for this, I'm using fronds. I think they're a bit easier to control in this situation. Just moving them around, making, them, making sure they kind of wrap around the tree. Next is this really great texture of broken bark. You can see that I use the height map and I'm using that as displacement on the decal so that way it doesn't just lay flat on top of the trunk. It's going to have a little bump to it. 
If you use the, the height map for this, keep it simple. Don't have too many detail, details. It will work better that way. Now, there's another way you could be adding those details on top of the trunk. You could use a projector. A projector needs two things to work. A base, which will dictate what is being projected, and a projector that will cast rays on target generators. So I already created the base. And what I'm doing is just copy pasting the ferns we already created before and assigning that to the base. Now I can create a projector. For this, I'll use a rectangle because I want it to be vertical. So I'll just rotate that around. And now I just need to increase the width so it goes all the way to the top. And now that it is done, I can assign the base and select the target generators. In this case, I want the trunk. I'm just checking the name. <laughs> That's why it's important to have proper names in your generation window. And then assigning the target generators. And there you can see we have ferns on the trunk. If you need a more in-depth tutorial for the projector, we have one on our YouTube channel, so go check that out. So for now, I'll just play with the fuzziness and then I also want ferns on the roots, so I'm, I checked those as target generators as well. After that, I'm just tweaking the position of each details we added on top of the trunk. That's a lot, <laughs> but if you're patient, you can make it, make it work. So don't hesitate to go into the node um, mode for the last step when you really want everything to be placed just right. I think moving each element separately is the key to achieving something really nice at the end. There you can see I'm using again another generator to send some moss on top of the roots as well as the trunk. And then I want to add wind. So. But now you see it like super fast forward, so it just jiggles away. <laughs> There's another decoration that I forgot. So we're going to add another mesh detail. I just need to put that on the tree. Change the generation style to interval. I think that's my favorite. I just use it all the time. So this one is just a mesh I made from the main bark texture. I'll make it wrap around and I'll show you if we can zoom. So right now it's a bit too small. You see the pixel ratio is not good, but if I make it bigger, you see, it's the same texture as the bark underneath, but it, when, it can add some really nice details to your silhouette if you have a really close-up camera or something. So I'll just increase the number of it. So you can see that it breaks the, the pattern uh, on the sides there. And it will catch the light really nicely. So you could have something really detailed. If you want to optimize your tree, but you still want some, some nice little details on your trunk, this is a good way to go. And I think I'm pretty much done with this covered in icing trunk. So that's it. I hope you learned some fun new techniques today. Thank you.